we are live. We are live. Okay. Should I turn down the volume? Hello and good evening. Hey, Elder Leonard. All righty, let me see. Got Sister Pat Jones in here. How you doing? Good evening. I'm hoping I can see. It won't tell me who all is in here. Thank you for saying good evening. As always, when you come in, please announce yourself. So I know who all is up in here. Ha. Oh, we got Pastor Jewel. Good evening, sir. Elder Dan, good evening. Elder Dan says good evening, everybody. Elder Ringo say good evening. Sister Dolores says good evening. Pastor Jewel, what's up, sir? Says good evening. You guys are here with me tonight. Sister Tanya says, good evening. I know some of you might have been expecting Bishop, <laughs> but you got me tonight. This is going to be fun. We're going to talk. Dr. J's in the building. How you doing, young lady? She says, good evening, to everyone. Okay, we got Sister Robin. Good evening. She lets everybody know good evening. We're going to like that. Sister Helen is in the building. You already know it. We see you, Sister Helen. Elder Trudy's in the building. She says hello. I'm thankful for everybody who's up in here. We got 15 people in here. Brother Dave just entered the building. Hello, sir. And if it seems like I'm at a delay, I think I'm probably like three seconds ahead of you guys. So I'm trying to make sure uh, I get everybody. It's all right, Elder Trudy. We know if anybody can spell in the comment section, it is you. <laughs> so glad you guys are here. Glad you're here, Brother Dave. Uh, we gonna try to, oh, Sister Anita says, good evening. Before I get started, I mean, it's only right if we play the Hour of Power song. So I'll give you like five seconds of that, and then I'll come back and say some more good evenings. Here we go. Hour of Power. Hour of Power. As I said before, about almost five minutes ago, um, you with me tonight. Um, I'm no stranger. If you're watching on a replay, this is your first time. Um, I am Deacon Marcus, one of the deacons at the church. Um, every now and then I do Bible study, Bishop asks. Um, and I am glad to be able to walk through the word with you tonight. Um don't be afraid to leave a comment. Um, don't be afraid to ask a question. If I don't know the answer to the question, I will get that answer to you and I'll DM it to you. Um, there's no shame here. We're all learning together. Um, this is uh, this is very good. Oh, good evening, Pastor Rideout. Good evening, First Lady. Y'all know I'm going to talk to everybody. 
Oh, good evening, Sister Sampson. <laughs> Let's leave that up a little bit. <laughs> Sister Sampson, Sister Sampson, praise the Lord. That's my wife. <laughs> so we're going to walk through this uh, tonight. Um, we have a very encouraging lesson. Um, if that's the word I will use tonight, it's very encouraging. Um, and so we're going to be talking about repentance from dead works. Um, yeah, repentance from dead works. All right. Oh, so Dr. Williams says, good evening, everyone. Of course, we're going to make sure we like that. Yeah, Sister Selma said, y'all watching. Keep watching. <laughs> So tonight we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, going to verse 3. Um, thank God for technology. Um, I will post the scripture up so we can read together. Um, I'm going to apologize now. I'm reading out of the NLT tonight and the message version. Um, we're going to start with the NLT um, just so it's an easier, easy to read version, in my opinion. Um, and then we're going to go to the message. Um, it's th the way they communicate in the message um, helps us to understand just a little bit better. The words, the way they express themselves is great. Um, so, again, thank you for joining us. Be before I start, let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this time. Um, we ask that you be with us in this study. Help us, Father God, to understand your word. Um, your word brings light. Your br word brings life to us, God. It encourages us, and it causes us to grow. God, help us all to study together. Help us all, Father God, to ask questions. Seek your face, God. That way we can be the light that you want us to be in this world. We thank you. And we praise your name. Amen. Amen. So I got to get the nerves out first. And then um, we'll get to going. Got my coffee here. All righty. So uh, the topic I was given um, was repentance from dead works. Hebrews 6. So let's go there. Make sure I do it right. Oh, okay, okay. Technology is working with us tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. So, we are coming out of the New Living Translation. Um, if you read another translation, I'm sorry. This is what we're going to work with tonight. And I'm going to read starting at verse 1. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely, we don't need to start, start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. Hold on, let me get the verse two. Oh, where'd my mouse go? There we go. You don't need further instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Let's get to verse 3. Uh-oh, did I do it right? Yeah, right, there we go. And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. We will move forward to further understanding so let's talk about it hey sister karen hey dr grandma um who else just came in sister Lindsay. let's talk about it so we're talking about hebrews and who the writer for hebrews is still up for debate um they spec speculate who they think might be the writer. Um, but whoever the writer is, they're talking to individuals that they know well. They have a relationship with them, and you can tell by the way that they're addressing to them or the way they're communicating with the audience 
and most likely the audience that they're sharing with are probably um, Jews who are now Christians who are suffering persecution. So that's just a little backstory. And so they came back, the, uh, the writer is addressing them, and they're talking about where they are in their walk. Um, so the great thing about Hebrews 6 and 1 is it's actually a continuation of Hebrews 5. 11 through 14. And so we're going to go back and we're going to read that. Hey, Sister Raisin, I see you. Hey, Sister Dora, I see you. Good evening. Make sure I miss nobody else. Okay. Let's try this out. Uh oh. So, I call to spiritual growth. And Hebrews 5 and 11, there is so much more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Excuse me. Surely we don't need we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. So let's talk about that. The writer is talking about once again, growth, where are you at? You've been a believer for a period of time, and through that period of time, have you allowed your understanding to grow, or are you still in the same place? Um, and that's a question that's really a self-reflection. Um, it says uh, where you're, cra- you're still craving milk, which babies crave, Um, and that was good for that time, but right now you should be teaching others. And what do you mean by teaching others? What I mean by teaching others is you should have moved along, you should have developed your understanding, and you should already be implementing the things in in which you have been taught. Um, So that's kind of problematic if you're not implementing the things you've been taught because that means you're not progressing. Um, I know a lot of people on here tonight are parents, and if your child is 15 and they're still acting like they're 15 months, I'm pretty sure, yes, Elder Ringo, that's a self-examination moment. It is a self-examination moment. So if your child is 15, but they're acting like 15 months, you will feel kind of strongly about how they're presenting. Um... Why would you feel that way? Because you've spent 15 years driving them to a point to where they should be growing. Um, you've put work into them. You raised them. You fed them. You led them the right way. They should have grasped fundamentals. They should have uh, social skills. They should be able to speak for themselves, dress themselves, clothe themselves. Um, and I'm not speaking for people who have deficiencies and they can't do things for themselves. I'm speaking for people who have the ability to take care of themselves and progress. Um, those people, that's who I'm speaking to. And this is what the writer is saying to the people now. What what's what's going on? You're not where you should be. You haven't progressed. You're at the same spot pretty much where I left you. And the problem with that is the longer you stay in the spot and you refuse to grow you are in danger of turning back to the things that you know. And why is that? Because yet you might not be progressing, but the things that are going to come against you are going to progress. So the battles you fight when you're a babe in Christ, the battles are going to get harder and harder and harder. And those battles are to push you back towards what you know. The devil don't want you to progress. The devil don't want you to know that you can be more than a conqueror. The devil don't want you to know that you can break generational curses. The devil don't want you to know any of that stuff. 
He don't want you to participate in growing. He don't want you to communicate growing. He don't want to hear any of that stuff. And so that's a state of being um, a word that they use in the Bible um, or in the dictionary is apostasy. I think I said the word right. I'm close. And that just means an act of refusing to continue to follow, obey or recognize um, a faith. So you refuse to continue to follow. You refuse to continue to obey and you refuse to recognize things that you should recognize in a faith. You are abandoning your loyalty and not your loyalty to me, your loyalty to God, because ultimately he's the one, the only one that can save you. And so that's the dangers of stagnant growth. Stagnant growth means you're not progressing. You're just staying at the spot. And that's what the writer was suggesting. You're not moving. You're still craving milk. You should have meat. You should be teaching others. Um, there's a lot more to your walk and to your faith than what you are showing right now. And it's really prevalent right now in our, well, it was prevalent back then, but we see it now. Um, you're still a babe in Christ and it's been four years. And I'm not, I'm not speaking on a particular person or anyone. I'm just using illustrations. And teachings like this is good for us because everybody has to examine themselves. And this is not me trying to soften what they're saying. This is truth. Everyone needs to examine themselves because where I could be could be me being stagnant. Even though to everyone else, I'm, I'm, it looks like I'm progressing. No, I'm still in my comfort zone. So it's easy for me to do what I do because I'm in my comfort zone. Now, when someone comes that knows me, knows the amount of work they put into me, they come and tell me that you're in your comfort zone. You haven't moved. You're in danger of falling back to your old ways. So one of the, um, there's a couple words that I want to, I want to highlight. Um, they call them uh, spiritually immature. So that's exhibiting less than an expected degree of maturity, lacking complete growth, um, different, uh, differentiation or development. So these people were displaying lack of growth um, and development. Lack of growth and development is going to cause you to participate in things that are eventually going to lead to, as I said before, dead works. And the dangers from that, the dangers of having participating in dead works means you refuse to transition. So if you're here, you refuse to get here, which means you're not leading to God's understanding or God's purpose, you're leading to your own. And even if you eventually stay here because God progresses us, that means you're moving in reverse. Why? Because if you're supposed to be here and you're back here, he's going to keep progressing and you're going to get further and further, further away. So you're actually going in the opposite way, going to a state of apostasy. And I'm really hoping I'm saying that word right. I should have practiced it a little bit more. <laughs> Some of the dangers of apostasy would be um, lack of connection. So Bishop calls us for prayer. Apostle calls us for prayer. You're not there for prayer. Um, Apostle calls us for fasting. You're not participating in the fast. Um, so then life happens. Life happens to all of us. Um, and then you can't relate to the word of the Lord that God gave you. Oh, you're going to move past this. if You, pr you can't if you pray if you fast or whatever the instruction was, you can't grasp it because you start to pull away while you should be progressing. You're pulling away, which means you're closing your ear. You're closing yourself off to what is being said. Now, even with that, uh, let's see, I want to make sure I don't jump ahead of myself in my notes. Thank you, Dr. Williams. I really appreciate that. I should know how to pronounce this word. <laughs> All right. So, stagnant movement can and not.
not just can't, it will be contagious to others because you'll tr- you'll start to attract people who don't want to progress. Um, you know, people that only need your help to get them out of a rough situation, they don't really want to change. They just need your help to get out of a rough situation. That happens spiritually as well. Um, verse 3 says, let me get over there, sorry. Here we go. Verse 3. Where did I do? All right, that's two. And here's three. And so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. The word understanding simply means the power of comprehending. Um, so, further understanding. What will further understanding do for us? Um, sometimes we can't see the light at the end of the, end of the tunnel. But we won't know that because we don't have the ability to relate. We don't have the ability to adhere to. Um, we don't have the ability to recognize um, what's working for us. And that's because we only know what we're willing to know. A baby won't know that candy tastes good unless you expose the baby to candy. Um, you won't know that you can be healed unless you expose yourself to more. If you're still at the at the baby say, oh, I'm just believing, well, you have to move past belief. You have to, your faith has to be tested. Um, you have to grow. You have to put in a work. Um, we're not going to get to understanding without work. Um, we're not going to get to spiritual maturity without work. Um, we're not going to grow with, without work. Um, and knowing that, even knowing that, persecution is going to come. These people are most likely facing persecution, and they started to show, like, all right, this is getting too hard for me. Well, it's getting too hard for you because you're not putting in the work. I can go to the gym, and I can go to the gym for a year. After a year, if I'm still lifting five pounds, I'm really not trying. I'm really not putting in the amount of effort that I'm supposed to be putting. I should be at least at 50 pounds after a year. It should be more than that. But, you know, everybody's progression is at their own level. And so going back to what Elder Ringo said, self-reflection. Um, do you know where you are in your walk? Um, are you holding yourself back? Um, are you practicing immaturity? Because you can practice immaturity. Um, some people are just immature. But, yeah, you can practice immature. Um, are you stagnant in your walk? Um, this this lesson really is, it's only three verses for real if we just stick to six, one through three. But for your own reading, um, what you should do, don't just take my word for it. If you go back and read it again. Start at Hebrews 5 and 11 and work your way to Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. It's only about eight verses. Where are you in your walk? I don't know. Only you know. I know where I am in, in my walk. And for me, especially being a person with the responsibilities I have, there's areas in my life where I'm stagnant. There's areas in my life where I'm not growing at the rate where I should be growing. So, therefore, when something comes that hinders my faith and I don't get to the understanding that I need to have because I'm failing to grow at the rate at which God wants me to grow. Understanding God knows how fast you should grow or how slow you should grow. He knows how much you can handle right then and there. So. Reflecting on yourself. Where are you? Where are you? You don't have to share it in the chat. I normally like, hey, hit me up in the chat and stuff like this. I really want you to think for yourself, where am I at? Honestly. Honestly. And the beautiful thing about this, the beautiful thing about reading this and we're, we're going to read it again um it's the relationship between the author and the audience um that'll identify whether you mature as well 
um, if you're able to respond to correction. Yes, Dr. Jewel. Self-reflection. Because I can't get you there. I can walk with you. We can do this together as a community, but it inevitably it's between you and God. I can pray for you. Um, What happens when you get a word like this? Somebody comes in, they tell you, hey, you should be growing at this rate. Um, What you're doing, yeah, it seems good, but it's not really doing anything. You're just rehearsing what you already know. Yes, the word of God does say, wait on the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love it when you guys talk. There you go. I'm sure. And like I said, I'm like three min three seconds ahead, so if I see it, I'll come back to it. Um and so let's see. Let's go back and let's read it in the message version and then we'll talk some more about it. Um because this is very good. It's very applicable. You should act. You really should find joy in lessons like this, um, because we all benefit from it. Um, and lessons like this bring, like I said, brings correction. Um, you ad- adhering to correction can prevent consequences. And I don't know about you. I don't really like. I prefer correction over consequences. Um, and so. Here we go. I don't think I did it right. Boom, here we go. All right, I got it right this time. This is in the message version. Um, Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. I have a lot more to say about this, but it is hard to get it across to you since you picked up this bad habit habit of not listening. That goes back into that word um, I said earlier, apostasy, an act of refusing to continue to follow, obey, or recognize your faith or an abandonment of a previous loyalty. So they are trying to uh, get us to avoid doing this. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet here I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one, baby's milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners, inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. We're in chapter six, verse one, message version. So come on. Let's leave the preschool finger painting exercises on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. Grow up in Christ. The basic foundational truths are in place. Turning your back on salvation by self-help and turning in trust toward God. Baptismal instruction, instructions, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, internal judgment. God helping us will stay true to all that, but there is so much more. Let's get on with it. I love the way the message version reads um, because it's just plain. It's plain. It's easy for us to understand. We have to get a move on. This world is getting worse, and we can affect what's going on in the world, or we can affect our world around us by progressing in God. Um. We are where we're supposed to be for a particular reason. Um, We are where we're supposed to be to affect those around us. We are there to be a light where there's darkness. We are there to show the world that there is a savior. Um, God works through his people and some of God's people, including me. We refuse to grow up. We refuse to mature. We like staying in Sunday school when it's time all right, we're going out. We're going out to pray for folks. Uh, You know, I'm going to go back to Sunday school. It's not going to work. Your voice, your presence, your intellect, um, the things that God has put in you is needed out in the world. 
what God has done for your testimony is needed. And so, therefore, you have to put off your old self and you have to transition. That's a change or shift from one state, subject place, to another. You have to transition. You can't be the shy, timid person anymore. You have to be that bold person that is going out there and proclaiming the word of God. Uh, we had the conference um, last Saturday, um, and my wonderful group, they mentioned a guy that had a bullhorn. You don't have to go out there with no bullhorn, but if a bullhorn is what you're supposed to do, then grab your bullhorn and go for it. Um, you don't have to have a big sign, but you can be a sign that there is hope, there is joy, there is peace, um, there is there is rest. There's a lot of stuff going on around you, but you won't know because you're so focused on craving the baby things when God has called you to the deep thing. Um, but again, it's that self-reflection. It's that that it's that are you going to move past and go forward to where you're supposed to be? Only you know the answer to that question. Um, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. You know the answer to that question. And knowing the answer to that question, you have to decide whether you're going to move forward or you're not. If you're not, you're just going to participate in dead works. Um, and as your brother, I can tell you, God did not call you to dead works, nor did he call you to participate in the dead works. So therefore, if that's what you're participating in, um, there's no progress, there's no growth, there's no signs of growth. Your fruit is not bearing fruit. It's just a fruit sitting on a tree, you're going to spoil, and you're going to sour. It is what it is, um, and that's by your choice, not by mine. Um, I want you to progress. I want to progress. And as a community, um, especially with the attacks that we get, we have to progress. We have to move past milk. Uh, we have to move past somebody holding our hands. Um, we have to move past somebody having us to pull us in to praise God. We have to move past people having to jerk us to to uh, ex extend our faith. We have to move past that. It's, it's important. It's imperative. There's battles to fight. There's battles that will be won. And there, for some who choose not to grow, there's going to be battles that you're going to lose. Um, and it's by choice. It's by choice. And, you know, even while I read this, I was like, man, I, I read this. I was like, oh, man, Bishop, you gave me a, I, I wanted a happy lesson, <laughs> uh, a lesson inspiring hope. <laughs> Elder Ringo says, your overcoming of your story is a testimony to help others find hope in themselves. Yes, pretty much. Pretty, pretty much. And when I say pretty much, that's me agreeing. Like, for real, for real. We can't stay babies. Somebody, it's somebody else's turn to be baby. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, it's somebody else's turn to be a baby. And we need to grow. And then they, they the baby need to grow. And somebody else's turn to be a baby. We should always be producing. If we're not producing, there's something wrong with that. Um... Yeah, it is something wrong with that. And as your brother, I'm going to tell you, hey, grow up. <laughs> Hopefully everybody on here knows I love them. If you don't know that I love you, I love you. Uh, and I'm still going to tell you, grow up. Matter of fact, type that in the chat. Grow up. Um, it is hard to say. And when you say grow up, that means you got to tell yourself to grow up. Because like I said before, the areas where I need to grow might not be the areas you need to grow. But I I know the areas that I'm in that are come easy to me. Those are baby stages. Oh, it looks great. Oh, you on a microphone. Oh, this ain't nothing for me. This ain't nothing for me. <laughs> ain't nothing for me to get on a mic. I can talk. If you know me, I've always been great at communication. Communication, I could have been a communication major. I'm great at communication. I don't like it doing it in front of people, but this ain't really hard for me. So if you're like, oh man, you're progressing. No, I ain't. Because I'm not at the level of where I should be. 
But only I would know that, and God knows it. And so, therefore, messages come, studies come, and it tells us to grow up. You got to grow up. Let me tell you something. It's about 23 people in here. Y'all have a message of hope in y'all. Y'all have the word of the Lord. You have a word of knowledge. You have have, um, everything in you to affect everything around you. You are a life changer. You are a world changer. But you will never experience that if you don't grow up. We got to. We can't be in Sunday school. And I know I said it. I'm going to say it again. Because it's it's happening. People are not growing up. And I remember when Bishop first asked me to, to um, do it for him. This first thing came to my mind. The people have to transition so they can get so they can see what God is trying to get them to see. Um, like, man, Bishop always saying these words. He always prophesying this, 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 this. He prophesies and he tells us what we needed. We're supposed to hear. That don't mean we just sit there and wait for it. We work towards it. We pray. We fast. We we wait to hear instructions. We follow through with the instructions. We don't just sit there. Like, hey, we're going to eat dinner. Ain't nobody take nothing out for dinner. I guess we ain't eating dinner. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to grow up. Why? This is what happens when you don't grow up. You become stagnant. You start to affect others. Um, you start to disconnect. Why? Because you, you, don't, you don't vibe like we vibe because you haven't experienced what we experience. Do you start to say things like, that works for you, didn't work for me. Well, you didn't put in the work. Um, you find yourself unable to relate. Um, and then once you stop relating, you don't hear correction. And what I mean you don't hear correction is not that you don't hear it through your ears. You don't hear it and process it so that it fixes what's wrong. And when you don't fix what's wrong, you put yourself in a cycle a sequences and normally that cycle of sequences is a con cycle so a, a cons- consequence and therefore while you're in that consequence you're participating in dead works you're not progressing that could be avoided if you adhere to what they said you got to put away this baby stuff it's great you got there now it's time to move forward Show up to church on time. Time to move forward. It's deeper things. Show up to prayer. Don't just come to church on time. Show up to prayer. Pray. Come in with thanksgiving. Come with joy. Just come in. Having to pump and prime you is baby stuff. What else is in my notes? Elder Ringo says we must mature in Christ. Yes, we have to. Thank you, Sister Helen. You're always encouraging me. I appreciate it. Sister Sandra Miller says, amen. Grow up. Got to grow up. Sister Sandra Miller also said, movement is required to reach destiny. Yes. Yes. What does the Bible say? For I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. We can't get there unless you move. Transition. I like that. Pastor Joe said we must occupy until he comes. Yes. Yes. And that word occupy. We have to take charge. You can't occupy anything if you don't do anything. And that should be, that definitely should be something where we all should try to strive. What is God calling us to occupy? If you don't know that, that is one place where you can pray you know you shouldn't be praying for just five minutes right now and i know it's like oh brother marks you just telling us all the stuff we shouldn't be doing we shouldn't be doing we shouldn't be doing i'm talking to me too this starts with me because it starts with me the person giving the words the first person responsible for the word oh it is tough it is tough responsibility responsibility and so I encourage you all to go back and read. 
go back and read this for yourself. Take time and really reflect on what this is saying to you and really talk to God about areas in your life that could be babyish because it's time for you to move on. And I've come to find this, and I come to find this to be true. Whenever we have something like this where God is calling us to move forward, it's because he has something for us. And it might not be like, you know, some cash or something like that. It could be just responsibility. And this is for somebody out there, um, especially for me. Stop being afraid of responsibility. It's good for you. It keeps you grounded. It'll help you grow. Um, and it'll really show you where you're at. So, yeah. Pastor Rado says, come off the milk. Breath smelling like Similac. <laughs> some of y'all out there on formula, some of y'all out there breastfed. <laughs> gotta grow up. Gotta get this meat. You gotta be out. You gotta be out here progressing and growing. Um, and this is fantastic. With a st- with a study like this, and I mean, we have pretty much had a conversation. I know you guys have to type to talk back to me. Um, even with this, this is going to show you what you do with this lesson tonight, or how you feel about it about Friday. Um, will definitely show you whether. You you're progressing or you're stagnant um because the writer wrote to this audience um because he didn't want them to go back he wanted them to keep going forward so he loved them enough to correct them now how are you going to respond to correction man is an inevitable evolution of consistent change in and through the process of life that is so true (laughs) we're going to evolve and change consistently because time doesn't stop because we want it want it want it to stop it's going to keep progressing so you can stay where you at life's still going to move on wow thank you other ring i appreciate that He says, forgive yourself to move forward because God already have. Keep moving forward. Yeah. And that's that's self-reflection. You know what's keeping you at that state. What is it going to take for you to move forward? And when you identify that, move forward. Right. Got teeth for meat and still just want milk. That is true. That is true. Pastor Jill says, don't quit. Repent and move forward. Yeah. If you find yourself operating in dead works, which means works that are not producing, repent. Ask God to help you change your ways and move forward. You know, it's not hard. You don't have to run up to the altar on Sunday. If you do, that's great. But it, you can do it right now in the comfort of your own home. Talk to God. You know, you don't have to come tell me, hey, Brother Marcus, man, I had to come repent. No, nah, just talk to God. We'll see the change. We'll see the growth. We'll see you eat meat. You will see you get big and strong. Mm, that's what meat do. Get nice, big, and strong. So that is pretty much all I have for tonight. Um... I'm really thankful that you guys decided to come chit chat with me. Um, I know I'm a little bit different. My style is a little bit different from Bishop, but this is a part of me growing up, um, accepting responsibility. Elder Ringo says, but if you are within the forward motion, you only lose ground until you recognize change, changes that need to be made. Yeah. Yeah. You recognize. You recognize. And by some of your comments on here, I can tell that you guys are doing a self-reflection. And the reason, like I said, the reason behind his wording, um, well, one of the reasons is he didn't want them to give up because of possible persecution and go back. 
to the dead works that was not benefiting them or getting them anywhere. You know, you made a good start. You made the right decision. Now progress and grow up. Um, and with that, quick announcements, and then I'll pray and get us up out of here. Uh, y'all already know, service started on Sunday. Well, it don't start on Sunday. It starts at 945, so get there like 940. There's plenty of parking. Come in and pray. Come in and pray. Don't come in and talk at 945. Come in at 930 if you want to talk. And then be quiet at 945 and pray. What Whoever's leading us in prayer at 945 to 10. Service starts at 10. Um, can't wait to see you guys in the place. Thank you, Elder Rideout. Pastor Rideout, I appreciate it. Dr. Williams. I appreciate it. Um, oh, yes, sister, sister Helen. Yeah. I was, I'll say this real quick. Last year with Elder Dan, I was like, man, I was hoping Bishop was going to give me something uh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, man. Like, this is tough. Self reflection, topics on self reflection is a little tough, uh, especially when you have to talk to grown adults. <laughs> Like, oh, I can do it with kids, but nah, you got to do it in front of your peers. Yes, Sister Miller says, as Paul said, forgetting those things behind me, I press. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. And if you find yourself in need of support, this is what this community is for. This is what this community is for. We're here to help you keep pressing, and to encourage you to move forward. Go to the deeper things in God. I promise you, there are levels to this, and there is a blessing with the pressing. <laughs> and so, yeah, service starts at 10, but come to prayer at 945. I've seen the comment. I'm going to finish this thought, and I'll go back to your comment. Um, Service at 10, our power next week at 7. Um. Yeah, be here for our power. Don't be like, I ain't coming because they told me about myself. I didn't tell you about yourself. We read the Bible, which you should be doing every day. Um, even if it's one or two verses, read. And we reflected. And we talked about it and we discussed it. This is signs of a healthy community. Invite somebody. Invite somebody. Um, invite somebody Sunday. Invite somebody Wednesday. Invite somebody to look at the replay. Like, hey. Sounds like you need some self-reflection. So while you're out there in your area where you're preaching and you're evangelizing at your workplace or at the coffee house or wherever you find your leisure at during the week, you know, it's like, hey, we got a good lesson this past week talking about sec um, self-reflection, um, progressing, um, coming from Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. You should read it. And if you want to see some other people's thoughts, come check out the Bible study. Great way to evangelize. Great. Another way, great way to evangelize is to share the sermon from Sunday. Um, man, we had a powerful time on Sunday. The preacher really preached. Um, and this both goes hand in hand. Um, we have to transition. We have to move to meteor things. Um, First lady says, great teaching I receive. I receive as well. Um Pastor Joel say amen. Sister Sandra Miller said good teaching tonight. Thank you. I appreciate all you guys' encouragement um, and further encourage, encouragement. Y'all see me on Sunday. Make sure y'all say, Brother Marcus, grow up. <laughs> grow up. <laughs> grow up. That could be our own little thing. Everybody came in the Bible study, see somebody on Sunday, be like, hey, what's up? Grow up. <laughs> And we know because we all came. Thank you again. I really appreciate your time. Thank you to our apostle and first lady, our leadership team, Pastor E, uh, Pastor Tanya, all our leaders. Um, they give me, they show, especially the apostle, he shows great trust to me. Um, so I definitely want to make sure I let him know I appreciate it. Um, and I'm growing. He's not going to have to push and pride me. I'm growing up. 
I'm going to accept my responsibility. Uh, yeah, we all going to accept our responsibility. We're going to grow up. We're tired of this milk. We need some cheesecake. We need some smoked salmon. Um, we need some vegetables in there. Um, yeah, we need some of that good stuff, and it's all there for us. So I'm going to pray us out. We're going to get up out of here. Um, God, we thank you. We thank you for everyone who who came. We thank you for the people watching on the replay. Um, thank you so much for sojourning with us, walking through these couple of scriptures. Um, Father God, I ask that you take us into our quiet time so that we might see what you're trying to say to us in the areas where we need to grow. Um, God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you because you're not a God that will leave us where we are. You're a God that will come and you'll give us a right now word of correction. Not so that we could feel bad, but to to prevent us from experiencing consequences. We thank you so much, God. We ask that you look on our leadership. We ask that you look on all our membership, our citizens. Keep them safe and covered on your blood. Keep them safe on the highways. Keep the kids safe in school. God, we thank you for opportunities, creative miracles, God. Um, debt cancellation. We thank you for all these things that you, that we are going to see not only this year, but years to come. We thank you for generational wealth, generational blessings, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word when it's something that's beautiful that we want to hear. We thank you for your word when it's beautiful, when it's something we don't want to hear. We thank you because you don't have to speak to us. You decide to speak to us and you find us worthy to speak to us. And we thank you. We praise your name. Amen. Oh, Lord. Now y'all got to start talking about food in the chat. First lady wants some steamed blue crabs. Uh, Pastor Jewel said some ribs. <laughs> if that's one thing church folks going to do, they're going to pray and eat. <laughs> yes. Mature gracefully. We're going to mature gracefully. Thank you, Elder. Elder Ringo. Thank you. Mature gracefully. When I see you Sunday, Brother Marcus, hey, man, grow up. Remember that. We're growing. I love you. You all have a great night.